Hi, and welcome to the 2019 question two on the paper two, Leave It Ordinary Level. As usual, if you want a copy of the set of notes I'm working off, please send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com. The email address should be in the description below. So question two here is quarter geometry question. Now just to point out of this formula here, um, I'm taken from the maths tables, okay? So when you come to quarter geometry, the maths table should be here. Okay, so your contents you're looking at this section here on page 18. And we should know how to use, well, actually all of these formulas here. Slope of PQ. And we're given three different coordinates here. So there's an argument for, you know, quickly graphing them. Okay, I'm not going to do that here. Um, you don't have a huge amount of space. In the two points I'm looking at, written them out here, then I've labeled them first x value, first y, second x, second y. All I'm going to do now is put the number where the letter is. So instead of the y2 goes the 5, instead of y1 goes the 2, instead of x2 goes the 8, instead of x1 goes the 4. Now none of these numbers here are negative, so the signs here aren't going to be changed, so I, I didn't put them in the brackets. Although you could argue maybe I should to be consistent. But I should definitely, if there's a negative number here, okay. Um, so I'm just going to go with what I have. Uh, 5 take 2 is 3. 8 take 4 is 4. So this slope is going up 3 for every 4 units it goes across. So that's the rise over the run. Anyway, so I've got the answer. It's good, easy 10 marks. Part B here says, find the equation of the line PQ. Give your answer in the form AX plus BY plus C. 0. So this is the... the uh, point inter intercept form. Now, you don't need to know that. All you know is they want everything on one side x positive. And this a, b, and c are, are elements of z, so they're going to be integers, so positive, negative whole numbers. So you won't have decimals going on here. Now I have two formulas from the mass tables. Now, the one on top is the one that's going to work here best. If I had just the slope and the y intercept, then I could use the second one. It's not commonly used in the insert, in my opinion. So the top one here, and go to my method. So there is a formula. There's my slope. There's uh, the point or one point on the line. I could pick. I could use Q. I uh, would have worked just as well. I've labeled it. Okay, my first x value, first y value. Now, if you notice in this formula, I don't need to substitute something for this y and this x. They end up in the answer. Okay, it's the y one and the x one here that get substituted. So I've done that here. Okay, now they want the answer not like this. They want everything on one side, x being positive. So I have to do a bit of simplification here. One quick method here I, that people use is they learn off that this works. If you multiply the 4 this way and the 3 this way, it's, I suppose, the same thing as multiplying both these terms by 3 quarters and then multiplying across by 4. So it just works as faster. And there are varied ways of simplifying a statement like this. This just is handy. We have 4y, okay, uh, 4 by minus 2 is minus 8. 3 by x is 3x. 3 by minus 4 is minus 12. So then I want to bring everything to one side. Again, I want x being positive, so I'm going to leave this here. So I'm bringing these two across. That changes to a negative 4y coming across. The negative 8 changes to a positive 8. Do a bit of simplification. Okay, the 8 take 12 is negative 4. That's my answer. If you're being pedantic, they want the x of the zero on the right hand side. So I'm just basically, it's a mirror image, so everything just swaps, no signs change. But I don't think it'd be penalized. I think that'd be perfectly acceptable as being correct. Now, part C, has, C says, write down the slope of any line that's perpendicular to PQ. So the word perpendicular is the important piece of information there. So our slope was three over four. Now, a perpendicular slope can be easily found by just turning the slope upside down and changing the sign in front of it. That's one way. Now, this is the answer here. You could also use the slope, um, perpendicular slope formula. One slope times this, a perpendicular slope should multiply it to give minus one as the answer. So if I know one slope, I 
can use this formula to find the perpendicular. So three quarters times the perpendicular slope is equal to negative one. You bring the three quarters across, negative one divided by three quarters, factor will tell you that's the same thing as negative uh, four over three. And that's the answer I got from the simpler method. Now the last part here, it says find the area of the triangle PQR. Okay, now PQR, okay, uh, I think I've taken the screen print. Yeah, I have, yeah. Taking it from part A. We're not actually giving them on a Cartesian coordinate system. So we're just giving what the coordinates are. But neither of the three uh, vertices of the triangle are on zero, zero. So this triangle formula here only works if one of the corners of the triangle is at zero, zero. I'm going to move one of them to zero, zero. It's the, usually the way to do it. If I move one of them, the other two coordinates will move the same distance again. So I'm moving the point four, two. So it's going down four on the X, it's going down two on the Y. So the same thing will happen to the other two points. So the eight goes down four, the five goes down two. On the last point, two goes down four, 11 goes down two. Okay, so I make, end up with these two points. I've written them there. I've labeled them. Okay, so now I can put in my points. Now it's a bit of a weird formula. These bars in this case don't mean distance, they mean absolute value. So if you did get a negative answer here, you can turn it positive and then the formula will work. And a half times that number. So four times nine, this is 36, take away negative six. So it's 36 plus six is 42. Half of 42 is 21. That's the area and whatever units they are, they're going to be squared. So I should always put in units to make sure I cover myself. And that's, that's D in this part, question two. So thanks very much. See you in questions three.